Book Trailer The Power of the Bloodline A Woman's Mystery Hello my friends, I welcome you to our meeting. Dear colleagues, dear students, today I am going to tell you about the course, The Power of a Bloodline that we have in our school. This is a very serious research course in which our students explore issues related to their own bloodline. Researching any subject requires a system. The books I am about to present to you describe such a system. The subject of the power of a bloodline must be studied thoroughly and over a long period of time. And a person who wants to study his bloodline must be prepared for this. After all, gathering information is only half the battle, it is far more important to understand it. And it is to the understanding, the correct interpretation and the ability to systematize all the information received about the history of one's own bloodline that the books I am presenting to you are dedicated. There are three such books in the school at the moment. In fact, each is a textbook that not only helps you absorb information better, but also helps you organize it in some way. You will be able to see the patterns. You will be able to see a certain system in the pleasant or unpleasant, happy or unhappy events of your life and the lives of the members of your bloodline. This will be of great help in your future movements. First of all, you will realize that the events that happen in your family are not random. They are patterned, they are mathematically programmed. And each member of the family each descendant or ancestor puts their information into this program of creating reality. And some of them can even make their own changes to that program. This book describes who has the right to put information in and who has the right to make changes. These books also pay a lot of attention to such a serious figure as the Regina of the Kin, who is actually the matrix of the structure of the whole bloodline, the leading figure of the whole family. She is not a programmer, but she sets the matrix on which the program is built. And no programmer will be able to create a program other than the one specified in the matrix. And the first thing you need to do when you start researching your bloodline is to find out, understand and realize who the Regina is. Answering this question will eliminate a thousand others, because they would be meaningless. By understanding the function of the Regina, you will begin to see what she can and cannot do, and what kind of matrix she holds. A wise man, working with his bloodline, begins to work with the Regina, realizing that she is the only one who can change the matrix. After all, the Regina is only human, so she can be persuaded, she can be convinced, she can be taught. And she will change the matrix herself, she is the only one who can do it. But you can interact with her how to do this and how important this first step is, tells the book I present to you. This book is the first of the three to be written. Here the figure of the Regina is described and revealed in vivid detail. In this book, The Power of the Bloodline, A Woman's Mystery, you will find a lot of information about the Regina of a kin. Why is it dedicated to women? As if men don't research their bloodlines, don't have the power of the bloodline and aren't included in its structure. Of course they are included and they have a very serious function there. But the thing is that the control over the structure of a bloodline was formed in the period of the development of the world during matriarchy. Thus, the right to determine certain functional characteristics in the bloodline exists and belongs only to women. Men accumulate power and fill this program with it. They spread it as far and wide as they can, I won't tell you in what way.
And that's their function. While women form, store, preserve, and thus build this beehive, this matrix, into which men later bring their power to nourish this structure. If for whatever reason, men are absent for a while or are unable to nourish this matrix, it won't be alive, but it won't be dead either. It will just be waiting for someone who will be able to do it. But if there is no matrix itself, if there are no honeycombs to hold the natural power, then everything that even the strongest extractors bring will be stolen by parasites from the outside. Because no one will store this power, no one will save it, and no one will weave the threads of the family's destiny. That's why this book is about women. It is written for women, but men are also encouraged to read it. I would even say that men should read it in the first place. Because they've forgotten a little bit what the real role of women is. If they remembered that, maybe the attitude towards mothers, old women, and little girls would be a little different than it is now. I highly recommend this book to you, not only to understand the mathematical algorithms of the bloodline, but also to try to realize the right place of women in the destiny and well-being of the whole bloodline. And to learn to treat differently those who store and save the resources for those who are not yet born and will not be born for a thousand years. Even now the women in your bloodline are saving and storing information. So I recommend this book to you, and I very much hope that it will change your life and the lives of your children. And I hope that you will become more reasonable and more conscious, not like these people without destiny, but like those who have their own life and their own mission in this world.